the narcissist goes where a narcissist can get supply. They'll go to anyone they can. But why are you more attractive? Number one thing is to educate yourself. Educate yourself on narcissism. Educate yourself on red flags. Understand the red flag. Getting informed can help you to have at least a sense of awareness. All right. That's not enough. Being informed is not enough. Being informed is just one step. It's a good first step. It's a good step for anyone to understand because narcissists can come in any place in your life. They can be a coworker, a boss, a friend, and I mean, it could be anyone, right? This is not necessarily just romantic relationships. It can be a family member. And it's not necessarily that you need to like, ah, narcissist run. It's okay. I'm dealing with a narcissistic person. That means they think this way. And that means they behave this way. That means I'm not going to engage in these ways. Does that make sense? Or you cut them off, depending on what you need to do for your life. Number two, this is big. Boundaries, you guys. We've got to learn what those are. We've got to learn what they mean for you personally, what they are in your life, and how to implement them, how to hold them, and how to... So nothing teaches you boundaries better than low contact with a narcissist. It teaches you about where the lines are crossed, where your lines are crossed, what it feels like when your lines are crossed within your body, within your emotions, in your head. It teaches you all of it, right? It's a it's a horribly difficult, challenging, impossible place to live, right? But it does teach you a lot. So if you're low contact with a narcissist, use it. I always say if you have to be involved with something that is uncomfortable, something that is painful, something that is difficult like this, like dealing with a toxic person, use it to learn what you can about yourself because you can't get out of it, right? This is if you're low contact and can't get out, you're co-parenting, you're or parallel parenting, whatever, and you're, um, you can't get away, right? Or a parent or a relative that you simply can't get away from. Use the information not to beat yourself up, not to go into the despair of dealing with them. Yeah, you're going to get knocked down when you're dealing, going low contact, when you're low contact with a narcissist, you're going to get knocked down a lot. You're going to have your boundaries stepped on. You're going to have, you're going to set a boundary and then they're going to come in from the side with something else and cross that line over and over and over because that's dealing with narcissists. Okay. But what it teaches you is where your boundaries are. And the reason it's so uncomfortable and infuriating is someone's crossed them. Because a lot of people, when they've been with toxic people, when they've been in nar relationships with narcissists or other types of toxic people, they don't know what their boundaries are because they're so used to just trying to keep the peace, walking on eggshells. They're so invested in making the other person happy and making everything okay and in, in, in letting that other person emotionally rule the entire relationship and house and all of that. that we don't learn what our boundaries are. So number three. You self-advocate early on for yourself. You stop trying to people please in order to get people to like you. Break that codependent, break that people pleasing trait, whatever you want to call it, and just advocate. No, I don't actually want to do that, or I actually would rather do this, or you know, have a have a clear voice that is your own self-advocating for whatever it is you need to do. Keep your distance early on. So that you're not jumping right into someone else's life. You're not jumping right into fixing their problems. You're not jumping right into all of the things that make codependency big in our lives, right? And don't over share. That's another boundary that you have with yourself. But it's also a form of self-advocating where you give the information out as you see appropriate. Stop oversharing. Don't talk about your past traumas, your past relationships and all that early on with someone because a, a toxic person will use that information for the rest of the relationship in order to twist things. They're grooming you in the beginning. Toxic people are grooming you from day one, from second one, from before second one, from the moment they look at you across the room, from the moment there's eye contact, they're grooming you. So you don't want to give too much information really to anyone. Oversharing is uncomfortable for people who are not toxic right? If someone's oversharing, you're like, why are they telling me this? I don't know them. Or they're going, wow, they really need to talk. And, and it can be really like uncomfortable. But for someone toxic, it's like, oh, yeah, give it to me, right? Okay, so stop that. Five, self-reflect a lot. Self-reflection without judgment. Self-reflection gives you a chance after you've been around someone new, after you've been around someone not new, whatever, to feel how you feel 
about the situation, about yourself? If, are you picking up their energy? It's taking time away from the relationship to reflect on your own impressions in life. That's it. Your own impressions of what just happened. Your version. Reflect. Don't judge it. You might catch things. You might catch good things. You might catch bad things, right? So, okay. Don't overlook things. When you're with someone new, this is a red flag thing, but it's a it's a it's one we do easily because we go into the fantasy brain, right? Of what what could be. We get excited. It's nice to be excited by new people. And it's scary and it's terrifying when you've had when you've had a narcissist in your past, okay? So, don't overlook things like jabs they make, little jabs. Um being rude to other people, being rude to you, jokes at your expense, or when they admit fully what they are. Yeah, I'm not really good in relationships at all. You know, well, okay, take things at face value for a while. Try it. <laughs> okay. The next one is rock solid self confidence. Rock solid self confidence. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, no, but really, self confidence that you're okay alone. You don't need this person. You don't you are here because you want to be here not because you need to be here. You are not here to serve them, you're here to hang out with them, to be with them, to understand them, to learn about them. And for yourself, you're there for because you enjoy it. You are able to know your worth. Okay? You are not going to lower your expectations. You're not going to lower your standards. You're going to have a window of expectations and standards and they're all going to be reasonable but pretty high. Hi, meaning I will be treated with respect. I will have kind, compassionate, affectionate, empathic people around me. I will, you know, those kind of things. Those are high. Those are high for our standards, but they're pretty basic for people who don't want toxic people in their life. So avoid controllers. Avoid them. If someone's being controlling of your time, of your texting time, of your family time of your like early on of it's it's too big a red flag now by avoid sometimes people get anxious okay and they'll may might they might if you say to them hey i need a little space go back to your boundaries and they don't give it to you bye right it's not worth it because something's up some they're controlling for for some reason and it's not usually a good one so let's learn to not be such good supply. Number one thing with an empathic person, we have got to learn how to feel empathy for someone without giving a response to that empathy to them. You can, there's so many people who feel sorry for their toxic partners, who feel empathy, who feel guilt, shame, whatever it is for not talking to them, who logically you think this person hurt you. You owe them this much, nothing, nothing. And from where I said, I get angry at the toxic person, not at the person who's telling me, of course, you know, because there's this nice, wonderful, caring person and all this loving energy is being poured into the void. So we have got to learn that we can feel all of that. We can feel bad that they're alone. Sure. We can feel bad that they are suffering because they can never have a loving, healthy relationship. We can feel whatever what we feel through our empathy, but don't give a response based on that empathy to someone who's toxic because that's supply that isn't offering of caring, giving compassion. It is simply supply and it is burning your energy out. It's using you, it's hurting you, and it's making it so you can't see it's making you think that being an empath is a bad thing or <laughs> having empathy is, is, is hard is, you know, learn to take this compassion we have based on empathy and place it elsewhere in life where people who can receive it, a narcissist can't receive it. They just eat it. They just take it. My name is Lise Colucci and I'm one of the life coaches over at queenbeing.com.